Advances in research and new technologies mean that the number of new treatments approved by the authorities has increased tremendously over the past couple of decades. Having a larger choice is nice, but how do we make sure that the best possible treatment is given to a certain patient? When new drugs or treatment methods are proposed, we study them across several phases of clinical trials that help identify the most promising approaches among those considered. Finally, the best of them is compared with a currently accepted standard treatment by administering them in two groups of patients. These trials are designed in such a way that this comparison is based on the treatment only, while minimising the influence of other factors, such as age, gender or underlying diseases. Typically, the trials focus on a single outcome of the treatment considered most important by the researchers. In practice, however, a patient might be concerned by a different or even several outcomes of the treatment simultaneously. A treatment that gets rid of an infection but is very toxic is not the same as a treatment that fights the infection and is less toxic, right? The method of generalised pairwise comparisons, or GPC, allows to do just that, to evaluate all outcomes of interest at the same time and in a desired order of preference. Consider a trial that was performed to compare appendicitis treatment by antibiotics rather than the usual surgery. We begin by asking ourselves a question. Among the possible outcomes affected by this treatment, what are the most important for us personally as a patient? Then write them down on a list starting from the most important. We then take one patient from the antibiotics group and one patient from the surgery group and compare their outcome of the highest importance on the list. In our case, the number of days it took our patient to recover. Then we decide if the patient on antibiotics from this pair has recovered faster, or maybe the patient after surgery had faster recovery. Sometimes the decision is not easy to make. Maybe both treatments have taken similar time to work. Then we would look at the next outcome on our priority list and compare its value. Can we decide if antibiotics were doing better or worse than the surgery here? If we can, we leave it at that. If not, we would go and look at which of the two patients had better quality of life one month after treatment. All of the patients on antibiotics are compared in this way with every patient from the group undergoing surgery. We can now measure the effect of the antibiotic treatment compared with surgery. This measure is called net treatment benefit. It reflects the difference in the number of times that the treatment with antibiotics was better and the number of times that it was worse than the surgery. A value larger than zero means that the antibiotic treatment is better. If the net treatment benefit is less than zero, we would choose the surgery. This conclusion is based on the particular preferences that we have chosen. What if someone else had a different order of personal preferences? The net treatment benefit value will then change. It will inform which treatment is preferable based on this new list of personal choices. Without GPC, your treatment decisions are based on general expert consensus on what constitutes a single most important outcome, one which may not necessarily reflect your preference as a patient. GPC is a method that empowers you by allowing to participate in making treatment choices. Now the decisions are truly tailored to your own wishes and needs.